Hello, it's Thursday. So this week I have a lamp. Like it's a fine lamp, but I can't help but think it would be a better lamp if it was also a fish, like an anglerfish lamp. Now, the first major concern with that is of course, when dealing with yarn, do I really want to introduce a heat source? It is an, a completely LED lamp, like you can see it in there and you can, I've confirmed it using the details on the base. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to plug it in and we're going to leave it running for a couple of hours and just see how hot it gets. I don't think it should get hot enough to be a fire hazard, but we're just going to check it and make sure. Okay, so I have the little light running, not pointing it directly at the camera because I don't want to like blind y'all. So while I do that, we're going to check some colors out. So here we go. <laughs> And I do think we're going to go with like blue green color story just because recently I've done a lot of like big red. We've already done big yellow. I've done big orange and we've done kind of greeny blue, but I do think that we are missing like the blue purple from, from that kind of lineup. So I'm going to try and go for like blue purple for this fish, even though I know that's not really accurate but it's pretty. And in the meantime, we're going to do some sketching to try and work out what I think an anglerfish actually is. So there are a few kind of challenges I can see becoming an issue as, as we work through this project. And this is all, of course, assuming that we overcome the heat issue. So the first problem I think we're going to have to solve is planning our assembly so that we're assembling it around the lamp. The lamp doesn't have any pieces that come off. So that means that it, the whole thing is going to have to be built around it. We have done things like that before, building like the owl onto the stand. So it's not a deal breaker, but it is definitely going to be a challenge. I think what I'm going to have to do is split the fish in half and, and like sandwich it together around the pieces. It is made easier by the fact that the light has a, um, a weighted base. So I don't have to worry too much about counterbalancing. So I've gone ahead and I've grabbed the colors that I want to use, but I have a hard time visualizing where I want them to go sometimes. So I'll just grab any line drawing of an anglerfish from Google and I'm going to block out the colors in Critter first. <laughs> lamp on, lamp off. Right. So. Testing done. It did warm up. It did warm up, but not so much that I'm worried about it. We did give it a good solid test of a couple of hours there. So please be aware if you're, you're thinking about doing a similar project to this, that you, you like you don't introduce fire hazards into your house. <laughs> I have allowed myself like three days. It's, it's really two and a half because it's already like three o'clock on day one, but I've allowed myself three, three days <laughs> to make this project in order to get it done for this week. So we really need to hit the ground running. So we're going to start by making the body piece. Given that I'm already going to have to split the fish into two main sections in order to assemble it around the lamp, the logical thing to do is to split that into a, a face piece and a body piece. So we're going to start with that body. So I think, I think like this much of it needs to be inside the head, needs to be inside the head. And then this much can like stick out the top, but I can, it's delightfully bendy. I can sort of adjust that. So now only like this much and then this much can be outside the head. So I think there's going to be quite a sizable fish. Any pattern notes I make today will be made available to my patrons. They'll be listed there. This is not going up on Etsy. So if you're looking for it, Patreon's the place to go. <laughs> So this lamp has been in a forgotten corner for a couple of years, so let me just give this a dust real quick. So much better. <laughs> for this shape, I'm thinking about a big squishy ball sitting on a flat surface. So in order to do that, I'm going to pick three roughly even points around my round and load increases into them over what feels like a hundred rounds. but was actually only 57. I think it feels bigger than that, but that's mostly because most of the rows had more than a hundred stitches in them.
So here is my big blue gumdrop that is going to be forming the main body of my anglerfish. Now, is it too big? Yes. <laughs> is it going to make the rest of this project super hard to work with? Also, yes. Am I completely in love with it anyway? The jury is still out on that one there, but there is definitely potential here. So I think the next thing that I want to do is make the pieces for the head. So I know that I'm going to need to, because of lamp, this is going to be like up to the back of the lamp and then the head can be built like on the front as a separate piece around our little lighting thing. But then the question becomes like, what kind of mouth do I want to do? Cause like we could go open mouth like we've done before with like the Raptor and more recently with our little screaming opossum friend. Um, or like there's always like the cartoony triangle teeth route, but I do think that I'm probably going to go the way that I tend to go, which is like open mouth with individual teeth. So I guess the next thing to do is make kind of like the top jaw and the bottom jaw as separate pieces and just kind of work out how we're going to go from there. I guess I'll start with the face. My plan is to build it as a basic circle and then just fold it in half. So we'll see how that goes and I'll add in some shaping near the end if I need it. I think it's getting there. So I have added some shaping that needs a little tugging into place, but makes more sense when it's actually put onto the body. I do think it needs an edge. I did color one in in my color plan, so let's go ahead and add that now. So with the lower jaw, I need it to fit into the curve of the top of the mouth. So this piece is going to be a lot more trial and error. We're going to have to try it on pretty much after every single row. Okay, so I've made the top of the headpiece here. Thank you, buddy. She looks something like this. <laughs> Put that out on the, on the camera there for us. And I've also made the bottom of the jaw, which looks kind of like a beanie at the moment, as well as like this long lip piece. So these pieces have been somewhat ironically, just devouring all of my yarn. Like this colour here, this is all I have left of a full ball. A little bit of the pale colour, well, okay, maybe 25% of the pale colour left there. Like it's just, it's just been devouring everything. Um, and a big part of that is just because with something this size, I like to do the double walled kind of structure, which means that I don't like a single layer of anything. I like to double it over, which it's basically, it's for aesthetic, but it's also for the foundation of it. It allows me to do things like put wire supports inside and hide them away. So like, there is sort of method to that madness, but the trade-off for that is that it does just chew through your yarn. So um, just being very careful <laughs> with what I make in what colours at the moment, because not all of these colours are still available in my area. So I think what I need to do is start assembling these base pieces but I'm really hesitant to do that because obviously there's going to be like a lot of teeth and a lot of unknowns still that I haven't worked out yet and some of those might become really difficult to do if I've already attached the pieces so we've got some concerns here now but I think what we're going to do still is pin these pieces on around the, the like the base of the lamp just kind of see what we're looking like and if this is even kind of worth continuing and I hope it's worth continuing because I've been chip chipping away at this thing for like three weeks now and I'm really hoping this is the week that I get it done. Let's see what we can do here. I always forget which way up this piece goes because I definitely made it with a slope into the tail in one direction but I can't for the life of me remember which way it was and I suppose if I can't tell to look at it 
it doesn't really matter but it bothers me because I know I did it oh good I've put the lamp directly over my face <gasps> picking a top yeah okay I'm gonna just arbitrarily claim this is the top and I've marked it now so I don't forget it in future I'm just gonna butt that up to the lamp part of me wishes that I'd closed it down around the base just to make this a little easier because I have no way of actually like attaching this now yeah okay 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 we can we can work with this we can do this so I've got a couple of my safety safety clips here okay okay cool so there we are we have that attached I might just change the angle you guys are on because you don't just you just you'd, you'd rather be looking at this so I have the bottom jaw piece that I have folded in half I'm a little worried about the fact that I have to try and attach that over the base but uh, I'll hopefully be able to deal with that soon Then we've got the head which kind of just also folded and pinched and this folded edge is going to form that top lip and it will go something like this so the more I play around with this the more I'm starting to think that I'm definitely going to need wire framing both the top lip and the bottom lip and then just sort of sticking into the body because I think it's the only way I'm going to be able to keep these lips holding their shape particularly once they're weighed down with the teeth Hello. Okay, so it's a million hours later. Um, so it looks like the way to get the head to attach properly was to insert the wire along the lip of both of them and just sew some of those pieces together. So you see there we've attached the lip the whole way around. I've also sewn shut the top of the head. And with the bottom of the head, I've sewn the wire in around the lip, but I've left the back open just to give me a little bit of flexibility as to how it attaches to the head. Whew. It has been a long day. It's like <clears throat> it's like nine o'clock at night. So like the back of this can now like bend upwards to accommodate the frame of the lamp, which I was worried about before because I couldn't quite get them to connect properly. But now that wire's in, I can get it to hold its shape and curve around the base of this piece. So I'm no longer super concerned about that. And then our big head, which I think needs to like bend a little bit more. It's an armature wire, so I can bend it. And there'll be like a hat piece on top here to like blend our lamp in with the back of the fish. He's not looking super happy, or she, sorry, she is not looking super happy. But uh, we can definitely get it in the details, I think. So I think the next part of this process is churning out a bunch of the littler details. So things like eyes, teeth and fins. Then I still have to resolve texture. Then we'll sort of come back here and start trying to assemble again. YouTube thumbnail <laughs> right so yeah that's eyes done I pull guppy head over here give me a gup yeah so I did end up going with crochet eyes clearly and that's mostly because plastic safety eye 
scale just isn't quite working for us. <laughs> not quite. So I thought they're not as shiny, they're not as like animated, but they're a little bit more size appropriate for the project. So eyes, check. <laughs> so next up I'm going to tackle the fins. I only have this much left and I still have to do the fin down the back. I'm um, a little bit nervous about that. <laughs> Look at the little fins. I genuinely love the way her facial expression is turning out. I wasn't really sure for a while there, but um, it's great. It's so good. I'm so pleased with it. And she's not too big. I was worried about that for the longest time, but as I see her all put together and like all of her foundation pieces in one spot, I'm just like, no, she's actually like perfectly proportioned with the dangle. Now I do still have to cover up the dangle for, for like YouTube needs all dangles to be covered, you know, but uh, I'm resisting the urge to turn the lamp on until she's finished. So like we're being strong on that on that front. I've recently on TikTok encountered the, the some of the basic principles of I think it's called Irish lace where you like work stitches over the top of one another to form like these like really firm shapes and I think I'm going to do like a bunch of circles so like the most basic form kind of all over the body and kind of build up the texture that way and I think that could be really interesting. I also need to fill this mouth with teeth so that's on the to oh dear her face fell off so uh that's that's on the to-do list as well um but in general I'm I'm so pleased with her to make kind of a fun mask wow but yeah okay so focusing in um, I think I'm, we need to cover this. So I think I'm going to do that the same way that I did the lip where I created just like a long flat piece that can wrap around it and I can sew it shut. The two bit is easy. Um, this is the only bit, this little black cone. It's the only bit that really, okay, we'll take your face off for now, okay? It's the only bit that really gets hot. So that, that I'm a little bit more cagey about, but I know that it doesn't get too hot to touch. So that's a whole other conversation. I'm prattling on now. Let's try and focus. And then there's the question of like, do I want to cover this light part at all or do we just want to like leave it as like an obvious lamp type of thing? Because we could like add the light bulb over the top but it's kind of gilding the lily. A lamp is a lamp is a lamp. It already lights up. We don't need to pretend it lights up or make it look like it look like we're trying to make it pretend to light up. Hopefully some of that made sense. I'll cut it together if it didn't. Yeah okay so I'm gonna make the covering for this and a little little like skirt to cover this little black cone as well as a bunch of teeth and those like body embellishment bits that I was talking about. So I'm just gonna like, honestly, we're just gonna pound out all of those things at the same time now, cause 10 o'clock on Tuesday night. We are, why do I do this? Cause, cause it's fun. <laughs>
So yeah, the way this works, we do as many stitches as we want into a magic ring. And then just crochet over the top and keep working around until you've gone around again. Which ends up looking a little bit like that. So yeah, that's how those rings turn out. And I just think that they're really interesting. So please correct me if I haven't done those correctly, but I just thought they were, they're going to give like a new and interesting texture as opposed to my normal, just like overlapping lots and lots of layers type of thing. So yeah, we're going to give a whole bunch of these a go, possibly in a couple of different colors, but I'm not sure at this point. So now I have all of these pieces, all that's really left to do is assemble. Now anything this size, the assembly, get, like filming it gets, gets a little bit tricky, but I'll, I'll do my best to try and keep it in shot for you. <laughs>
So there is our finished anglerfish. Now I hope you had fun watching me make her today. Uh, the notes will be up on Patreon. As usual, for projects like this, they won't be like complete and detailed, but they will have all of the crochet notes and at least the assembly order. So if you're looking for those, that's where you can find them. I am looking to name her, so do leave your suggestions down in the comments. But other than that, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye! <laughs>